Hail to you, Scion. How might we serve you? Commander Leverieur bade you serve us? These are welcome tidings indeed. Given the sensitive nature of the task, I could not rely on one of my own. That which I'm about to tell you, I tell you in the strictest confidence. Some days ago, we received certain documents from an anonymous source. They notified us of the presence of a Garlean agent within the ranks of one of the Grand Companies. Following some discreet inquiries, we identified a suspect among the Immortal Flames, whom we detained for questioning. Alas, the man was not our agent. He was but one of many men in the agent's employ. We pressed the traitor for a name, but he had none to give. He claims never to have met his master, whom he knows only as the Ivy. He was, however, certain that this Ivy had coiled itself around every part of the Immortal Flames. It would seem our quarry joined the company some time ago, and gradually recruited others to his cause. These conspirators are the vines by which he learns our secrets, all without exposing himself. It won't be easy to identify the ivy amidst this tangled mass of subterfuge, but we have a tendril in our hands, and we shall follow it all the way to the gnarled root. Now, much as I would prefer to proceed with due discretion, Circumstances demand that this matter be settled post-haste. Garlemald's war of succession nears its end, and it is feared that the Empire will soon resume its march on Eorzea. When it does, we can ill afford to have traitors in our midst. The ivy must be rooted out now. We must begin by apprising General Roban of our findings. I would ask that you accompany me to the Hall of Flames and remain on hand to see that things go smoothly. Assuming the Ivy's tendrils are as widespread as we believe, he will be aware that an investigation is underway. And if that is the case, he may well move against us. We must be prepared for anything while taking care not to betray our purpose by seeming prepared. A simple enough task for a one-man army like you. Well, well. What brings you here, my friend? He is here at my behest. Greetings, Roban. It has been a while. Hilbert, you old scoundrel. When they told me you'd be visiting, I scarce believed my ears. But look at you! The honored captain of the Crystal Bloody Braves! Who'd have imagined, eh? Not many, but fewer still would have imagined your destiny lay in politics, old friend. Aye, we've both come far, have we not?
Lest you wonder, Hilbert and I go back a long way. We've been friends and rivals since we were lads. The last time we saw each other, Alamigo had just fallen, so you can guess how many summers it's been. And in all that time, not a word from the fool! Ah, well, my dealings tended toward the modest and mundane, unlike some I could mention. As I hear it, no sooner did you reach Thanalan than the brass blades clapped you in irons and dragged you off to die on the blood sands. Being a stubborn sort, you won a thousand matches and earned yourself a place in the people's hearts while you were about it. Then, with your mountain of prize money, you bought the Colosseum and secured a seat on the Syndicate. Those balls, brother! Rags to riches does not do it justice. You're a hero to the common man. Bah! Spare me. I am no hero. If anyone is worthy of that title, it's our friend here. Next to him, I'm little more than a glorified butcher. But you, Wilbert, you sell yourself short. By all accounts, you are an adventurer of some standing. I like to think that I did my part for the greater good. But if you're no hero, then I'm no adventurer, not in this company. Anyway. I have tidings. So there has been progress. I've let it be known that this meeting is a reunion between old friends. None will give your visit a second thought. To convene elsewhere would only attract attention. Let us speak here, in plain view of all. So it is we who have been compromised. Telegi Adelegi's machinations have shaken Uldar to her foundations. In such uncertain times, a man's loyalty may be bought for a fistful of gill. But if this snake has truly been in our midst for as long as you say, we must needs consider a far graver possibility. Conspiracy. Could it be that the Monetarists have been in league with the Empire from the first? Very well. I will have my most trusted men investigate the matter. Continue your inquiries in the meantime. It does me well to see you again, old friend. When next we meet, let it be over a flagon of ale. I look forward to it. Let us reminisce of bygone days, and drink to the future of our homeland. Flame General, you wear the mantle well, old friend. I must work hard if I'm to keep up. Well, it would seem your services were not required after all. I dare say we have Roban's prudence to thank for that. Still, I was glad of your presence. My thanks, Sion.
Have faith, my friend. You need only state your case with confidence and clarity. Commander Leveilleur, it is both an honor and a pleasure to meet you. I am Emmerich, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights. Alfino Leveilleur, at your service. Your reputation precedes you, Sir Emmerich. I think we will find that we have much in common. Speaking of reputations, yours towers over us all, does it not? It does indeed, Lord Commander. I am not too proud to admit that I have followed your activities with an interest bordering on fascination. Full glad was I to learn that you would be joining us. Now then, shall we begin? We know full well that the Garleans will return in force ere long. What is more, we have yet to achieve a lasting victory over the Primal Menace. The Beast Tribes continue to summon their gods, and each incarnation is stronger than the last. Ishgard is not immune to these threats. I must reiterate that it would behoove your nation to rejoin the Aorzean Alliance. Once again, I must respectfully disagree. On what grounds? Despite their presence in Kerthus, the Ixel do not concern us. The territorial claims pertain to Gridanian lands, and it is the people of Gridania whom they harry. Consequently, the Holy See judges this to be a Gridanian affair, and Ishgard does not intervene in the internal affairs of other nations. Even were that not the case, our forces are wholly committed to the Dravanian conflict. We have not the knights to spare. As for the Garleans, we are not ignorant of history. We have observed the rise and expansion of the Empire, and we agree that it is only a matter of time before they resume their campaign in Eorzea. Then surely it would be in our best interests to present a united front. Mayhap one day, but not yet. Gaius van Belsar is dead, and the legion of conscripts he left behind lacks the will to fight. We think it highly unlikely that they will emerge from behind the walls of their castra for some time. Forgive me, but if Ishgard's position has not changed, why did you agree to this meeting? It was not only as a representative of Ishgard that I came here. Pardon? It is not within my power to change Ishgardian policy, regardless of my personal feelings. There is, however, one area in which I may exert a measure of influence. Concerns have been raised over the supplies House Fortin has offered to Revenant's Toll. These have led to calls for restrictions on the provision of aid to foreign powers. I can ensure that the shipments continue unabated. Sir Emmerich, we would be in your debt. No, you would not, for I require something in exchange. Of late, there has been a flurry of Dravanian activity, the purpose of which was not immediately clear. However, our astrologians have since observed alarming changes in the heavens. The dragon star waxes unnaturally bright, and there are whispers that it portends the resurrection of Midgard Sorma. The fallen guardian of Silvertear Falls? That's absurd. 
Full many times have I gazed upon the dragon's corpse still wound around the Agrius, and wondered how different our world might be if it yet lived to plague the skies. I do not know, and I do not wish to know, nor does any son of Ishgard. Yet the mere presence of Dravanian forces is not sufficient grounds to send knights to Mordona, whatever our astrologians say. As I told you before, we have not the forces to spare. But we do. So you will intervene on our behalf if we agree to watch over the Keeper of the Lake. Do you accept these terms? I do. I will see that you are kept abreast of any developments. I regret that we could not come to a similar agreement on other matters, but I understand that you are not at liberty to make such decisions. Nevertheless, I hope that what we have accomplished here today will serve to demonstrate to your countrymen that we can work together towards a common goal. Mayhap one day we shall look back on this moment as the first step towards a united Eorzea. Mayhap we shall, Commander. What is the meaning of this? The caravan, my lord. It's been attacked. It was Iceheart, my lord. What? By the fury! All our precautions were for naught? <laughs>